Well, Indiana University researchers started returning to their labs this week, and campus leaders announced students and faculty will be back on campus in the fall. Now, all of this hinges on a massive screening and testing effort now underway with IU Health. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Kylie. Thanks, Gary. IU leaders say the ability to screen and test for COVID-19 is the foundation to reopen in-person instruction and research. So the university and IU Health are teaming up to launch a major screening and testing partnership. As of June 1st, any member of the IU community who has symptoms of COVID-19 can be screened and tested using a new service powered by IU Health. This encompasses nearly 140,000 students, staff, and faculty. Joining me now to Tell us more, our Indiana University President Michael McRobbie and IU Health President and CEO Dennis Murphy. Michael and Dennis, thank you both for being here today virtually. A pleasure. Uh, Michael, thank let's you. let's start with you. Uh, tell us how IU's strengths in medicine and public health and the gathering of those strengths makes this reopening possible. Well, Carly, in the early days of the pandemic, after we had uh, closed down all in-person instruction on the campus. Uh, the, the next question for us really was going to be, um, what would we do in the fall semester as we worked our way through this? And we absolutely paramount to us was the safety of the university community. So we put together a committee chaired by the dean of our School of Medicine, which happens to be one of the, the largest school of medicine in the country and one of the best, uh, a number of our deans of public health and others, to. Uh, to, to help us uh, make the decision, to give us the expert guidance on what we needed to do. And one of the key things that they advised was that it was essential that we have in place a program for the screening and the testing of anybody in the IU community who was symptomatic, no matter which campus it was on. So the agreement that was put in place provides those services on uh, 15 of IU's, uh, around 15 of IU's facilities, 13 different cities uh, in, uh, in Indiana, and anybody who's symptomatic can use the process that we've developed in our partnership with, with IU Health uh, to, to ultimately be tested uh, for, um, for COVID-19. Okay, so Dennis, let's talk a little bit about that process. Can you just give us a quick overview of uh, how it works, sort of the framework of that process? Sure. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to have this evolve over the past 90 days where we've uh, screened and uh, tested over 45,000 people, but it is as simple as downloading an app uh, on your phone or making a phone call initially, and you get in contact with one of our clinicians to go through a screening process because uh, actually a lot of this is uh, very individually uh, dependent to make sure we understand your exact circumstances. And then depending on the outcome of that screening, um, we direct you to the appropriate clinical resources, whether that is to get testing, to immediately isolate and quarantine, um, or if uh, more severe, to come and access clinical resources, um, meaning come to the hospital, we wanna make sure you get the right care. So um, we feel very confident given our experience over the last 90 days um, that we've done this for our own employees who have worked throughout this pandemic uh, and also the general public that we, we've got a very strong system in place and able to translate that to help the university. And we should mention that screening uh, effort is free to any member of the IU community. Uh, Michael, we only have a little bit of time left, but uh, sort of a soft launch going on uh, at the IU campus right now with uh, researchers heading back to campus. You have about a two to three month window before students come back. What are you really focused on during uh, these couple last months before students are back on campus? Well, uh, what we're really focused on are the, the massive preparations that have to be made for resuming a, a mixture of in-person and online education for our students in the fall on all of our campuses, but to do it safely uh, within uh, the parameters that were uh, recommended by the committee that Dean Hess uh, chaired that I, that I mentioned before. Um, the, the scale of the modifications that are gonna be required, social distancing and instruction, 
uh, changes in the way our dorms work, changes in the way in which people actually uh, mix on campus. All of that has to be put in place uh, at a fine level of detail over the next the next three months or so, and that's that is an enormous amount of work. But uh, an excellent team at IU is, is is underway, and as I said before, what is so foundational to this is is the is the agreement with with um, IU Health, our partnership with, with IU Health, um, because we decided it was it was vital not to reinvent the wheel here. Um, we had that partnership going back 20 years to when IU Health was established. That should be the foundation of, of what we did. All right. Well, IU, IU Health, Dennis and Michael, I know you're both firing on all cylinders right now. Your organizations are. Good luck moving forward with this program. Thank you, Kylie. Thanks, Kylie. And Gary, back to you. All right, Kylie, thanks very much. Talk to you soon.